Can't forget my byline. By Jane Endicott, reporter. Rancho Soups present Jane Endicott, reporter. Another dramatic episode in the life of an American girl in the world of today. Stories of adventure, romance, and humor. Our story today, headline Girl Bites Dog, somehow involves a forest fire, too. It's all very bewildering. But first, friends, a few words about Rancho Soups. Rancho Soups are canned soups made in the West for Western tastes and appetites. Starting up just a couple of years ago, these small-town soups of the Sunnyvale Packing Company have grown to the point where they're sold in eight Western states. And their popularity is increasing daily by great leaps and bounds. There are seven varieties of rancho soup now. Rancho tomato, vegetable, asparagus, and pea soups. And three party soups. Rancho chicken noodle, cream of mushroom, and chicken gumbo. And because they're made right here in the West and freight costs are low, you can buy rancho soups at amazingly low prices at your nearest grocer's. Yet they are guaranteed to match the quality of any other canned soups on the market, regardless of price. Now, there are several good reasons for the quality and flavor of rancho soups. First of all, they're made from fresh materials, produced practically in the front yard of the rancho kitchens. Then they're blended and seasoned to authentic old western home-style recipes, and they're simmered for hours, just as you might make soup at home, to develop every ounce of flavor. There are two sizes at your grocers, the regular and the family sizes. Pick up a few cans today and see if Rancho Soups aren't the most satisfying you've ever tasted. And now, Jane Endicott, reporter. Today's episode headlined, Girl Bites Dog. In the editorial rooms of West Prince only newspaper, the Press Chronicle, Pete Flaherty, the editor in chief, looks up eagerly as his partner, Tony Jervis, breezes in. Hey, Pete. I just had the forest ranger headquarters on the phone. Stop the presses! Stop the presses! They, they, they got that fire under control. It's okay now. Uh, the oil field out of danger, Pete. Well, ain't that lovely. The greatest story we've ever had chopped to pieces. A story? What story? The one I wrote about the fire. A thousand oil bells glowing skyward in a maelstrom of blazing death and destruction. Westburn surrounded by a ring of flame. Explosions blasting. Oh, you haven't even been near the fire. I didn't have to be. I saw it all mentally. Oh, you better throw that crystal ball out of the window before it gets us into trouble. Hey, Jerkins! Jerk that oil field yarn out and get ready to set up another story to take its place. Make it snappy. We're six hours past the deadline already. Well, she's rolling at last. Only I was just thinking. How do you suppose that fire got started? Pete, I'm asking you for the last time, stop dreaming up stories. I've invested too much money in this sheet to make it a laughing stop. This fire was no mere accident. Huh? How do you figure that? It was simple. The wind was blowing in just the right direction to bring the fire down to the Caballero oil field, if unchecked. It doesn't happen every day. I smell a rat. Well, don't look at me. Well, figure it out for yourself. I'll give you the background. Old Benjamin Wench, who owns everything in this town, including this very building, also owns the Caballero oil field. And he didn't get it by playing Santa Claus. Why, the idiot who owned Caballera property didn't even know what it was all about until Winch had the land. Got it for song, too. Naturally, the previous owner has it in for him. Going to get revenge. Hey, see how it adds up? The fire, the wind blowing the right oh, way. Oh, forget it. You and your pipe dream. Tony, my lad, on a small paper like this, it pays to dig up choice items such as I've just suggested. Builds up local interest. Why, considering the state of our present circulation, we ought to call this paper the daily anemia. We've got to have more circulation. Good morning. Jane. Well, good morning to you. What can I do? Oh, Pete, this is the new woman's page editor I told you about. Oh, that's... What? Don't you remember? The one I hired. My dear fellow, you mean you were serious? <laughs> yeah. now, Jane, meet your other boss, Mr. Peter Flaherty. How do you do, Mr. Flaherty? I'm very happy to well, meet you. Well, my dear girl, welcome to the Press Chronicle. Well, Tony, I think you've got something here. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, however, uh, we can't afford to take on a tyro. Oh, look, all, Pete, you... this girl's no amateur. She was editor of her college daily paper. She's good. Well, excuse me, Tony. I didn't know the editor hadn't been consulted about this. Hey, no, this. wait a minute. I hired you. See, it's legal. Well, then I'm resigning. I'd rather not now, be... Now, wait a minute. Will you wait a minute? 
Look, Pete, take it from me. Miss Endicott has a good head on her. Yeah, She's so does a glass of beer, but it doesn't mean a thing. Oh, I'm sorry, gentlemen, but you need to... Now, come back here, Jane. Now, Pete, I'm warning you. Oh, one you. moment, Miss... Uh, the name is Endicott. Jane Endicott, and she's the swellest newspaper woman you'll find west of the Rockies. As a matter of fact, it was she who wrote that interview I had with Captain Endicott, her father. Oh, it was, was it? Well, I wondered why you made a comedy piece out of it instead of turning the heat on the old boy. So, oh, I see, I see. Well, Miss Endicott, do you consider yourself qualified to conduct the Press Chronicles family page? I'd like to try. Oh, very well. I'll give you a test assignment. If you do it, well, the job is you. Now, look, Pete, I... It's only fair to Miss Endicott, Tony. Yes, I'd much rather, Tony, if you don't mind. I don't want any doubt in Mr. Faraday's mind is my confidence. Ah, that's the spirit. That's the spirit. Miss Endicott, the trouble with this town is that there are too many dogs biting men. That's not news. I want to see a few men biting dogs. That's news. Well, what am I supposed to do about it? Well, that's up to you, but bring me in a good story. Bite a dog yourself. Now, what kind of an assignment do you call that? That, my dear Tony, was merely an illustration. Oh. But she's supposed to run a woman's page. Social gossip, recipes, advice to the lovesick, not look for front page banner headlines. Yes, she's a newspaper woman. She'll welcome the opportunity. Yes, she's perfectly right, Tony. I'll take any assignment he gives. I insist on it. I'll show him I can handle any type of story whatsoever. Ah, that's the spirit. That's the spirit. Now, get this. Yeah? That forest fire, the FBI suspect us. What are you talking about? The FBI have nothing to do with it. Ah, well, all right, all right. The police suspect Police nothing. All right, all right. I suspect it. I suspect it. Arson. See? And that's enough. Who's giving out the assignment anyway? Now, look. Look, dear. Mm -hmm. You know who owns that oil field, don't you? Uh... Uh, yes, Mr. Winch, I think. You think? I'll guarantee it. Now, as you probably know, he has enemies, deadly enemies. Yeah. I have a hunch they're out to burn him out. Mm-hmm. Now, today the wind is blowing from the side of the valley that hasn't been burned toward the oil field. Well, they may try something this very night. You go out there, snoop around. Right. Okay. Now, you bring me back a story that'll set the world on fire. It's been nice of you to come out here in the hills with me, Tony, but it seems like an awful waste of time somehow. Well, you didn't have to do this, Jane. You're already hired. Besides, this is just a fairy tale, a wild goose chase. Come on, let's go back to the car. It's late. It's getting cold. Ooh, it is getting chilly, isn't it? Yeah, you should have been with me last <sighs> night covering the fire. It was so cold, my red flannels turned blue. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look across the valley. That fire certainly blackened the whole side of that mountain. Mm. I'll tell you what. We'll stop by at the sheriff's office and get some figures on the cost of the timber ruin. That'll be enough meat for a story for tomorrow's issue anyway. Come on, let's get back to the road. Okay. Tony. What's wrong? I could have sworn I saw a man crouching there on the top of those rocks ahead of us. He seemed to be watching us. I don't see a thing. He's gone now. Oh, it's probably just a shadow. No, no, no. It It was too clear. came from behind us. Gone now. Tony, you, uh, do you think we're being followed? Well, who would want to follow us? I don't know, but after what Mr. Flaherty said, that... Hey, there's more than one in there trying to stalk us. Come on, give me a hand. Okay. Getting out of here. Oh! oh. oh guns, stand we are, Jane. Let him come, whoever it is. Don't make a move, neither of it. Tony. Oh, that's Sheriff Johnson. Keep him covered, man. Uh, hiya, uh, Sheriff. Hey, what's the idea of the fireworks? Somebody's liable to get hurt. Oh, that's you, huh? What? Miss Endicott. What are you doing here? I'm on assignment with Mr. Jervis, Sheriff. You? Yes, I'm with the Press Chronicle now. What's wrong? Well, I ain't quite sure yet. What are you looking for? Well, we want to take a look at the fire damage from across the valley. You can see it all from here. Well, who'd you think we were? Why'd you shoot? What's cooking? Nothing. Yet. I got a telephone call a while ago saying that somebody was going to be here about this time try to set the woods afire again. And then you came along. Telephone call? From who? He didn't say. We traced it to a telephone booth in a pool parlor full of bums. Ah, oh, it's just somebody trying to be funny. Well, he won't think it's funny there if I... There he is with those rocks. Oh, what? What? Oh, that hill, the man who was watching us, he's running away. Let's go, boys. Get him, boys. Get him, boys. Well, whoever it was, he got away, all right. Anybody find anything? Not a thing. Well, you'd better be getting on back to both of you. There'll be guards posted through the woods tonight. If you run into them, you're liable to be shot. Happy New Year. Come on, boys. <laughs> Sweet fellow. I wonder if for once Pete's hunch is right, that there was actually an attempt to burn the oil field. I think not. Oh? Why not? You didn't recognize that guy in the hill, did you? No, but, um... 
I have a pretty good idea who it was. Who? Tony. I didn't want to mention this while the sheriff was around, but I've been hiding this under my coat. Look. Recognize it? I'll say I do. Where'd you find it? Over there by those rocks where we saw him last. Oh, come on. Pete will get a kick out of this. He certainly will. Yes, he certainly will. Well, for the love of Mike, Tony, have you been out with Jane all this time? Well, I might have known. Look, dear, weren't you supposed to get this story by your lonesome? Well, I did want to, Mr. Flair. I did, but Mr. Jervis insisted. She doesn't have to apologize. What's that you're writing, Pete? Never mind. It just proves my point. Miss Endicott, if you weren't a rank novice, Tony wouldn't offer any help at all. I'm sorry, dear, but you won't do. But, Mr. Flaherty, I did get a story, and I'd have gotten it if he hadn't been with me. Yeah? And it's a Lulu. Yeah, well, spill it. I want to say one thing, Mr. Flaherty. You were right about your suspicions of arson. We ran into at least 50 men hiding in the hills, armed to the teeth. The sheriff and a posse were out there after them, and you should have heard the shooting. That They had shotguns and machine guns. Now, and, wait a minute, and... wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on there. If there's one thing I can't forgive in a reporter, it's deliberate faking. But, Mr. Flaherty... Why do you shock me, Miss Endicott? Haven't you ever heard of newspaper ethics? But, Mr. Flaherty... Not another word. I know what happened. I just returned from the sheriff's office. There was only one person. And they never even got close to him. My dear girl, you must be nuts. Oh, not her, but you must be nuts. Huh? Give him his hat, Jane. Here you are, Mr. Flaherty. We found it in the hills where you dropped it. Uh, uh, what, what? There's only one fedora like that in the whole wide world. And if the sheriff had seen it before we did, you'd be... Well, wait wait till the press services get the news of how an editor tried to fake a story by sending a cub reporter out on a phony assignment. Huh? Then telling the sheriff the woods were full of crooks. <laughs> and then parking himself on a hill to watch the whole thing himself. Uh, now, 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 wait a minute. Oh, squirm, worm. Oh, my, my dear girl, you, you, you mustn't make irresponsible statements like that. Why, if it ever got out, why, it would ruin me. Uh, that is, Mr. Jervis and myself... And the press chronicle. Now, now, suppose we let well enough alone and handle the story entirely from the sheriff's point of view, huh? <laughs> yes? Well, after all, my dear, as woman's page editor of the press chronicle, I hardly think you'd want to imperil its existence. Would you at twenty do- <clears throat> at $25 a week? Well, I, I don't know if... if ah, I... That's the spirit. That's the spirit. I knew I could depend on you. But why did you do it? My dear girl, as a newspaper man of the old school, let me give you a piece of valuable advice. When the march of time slows down in a town like this, give it the hot foot. Yeah. In other words, Janie, means if there isn't any local news, make it, even if you have to murder your grandmother. Well, uh, that isn't exactly ethical, is it, Mr. Flaherty? Uh, uh, ethical, she says. Mm-hmm. Come on, Jane, I'll buy you a hot dog. Say, that's news. News? What's news? Girl bites dog. <laughs> More about Jane Endicott in just a moment. But now, friends, please let me call your attention to something very special about those Rancho Soups down at your favorite grocer's. Next time you're in the store, pick up a can of Rancho Soup and read what it says in the shield that's printed on every label. Better than that, let me read it for you right now. It says that Rancho Soups are packed under the continuous inspection service of the United States Department of Agriculture. Now, only the rancho people give you the advantage of this unusual government service on soup, a service that assures you that everything inside the can is as it should be. When you buy a can of rancho soup, you know that it contains good, wholesome ingredients and that it's made under clean, wholesome conditions. As a matter of fact, rancho soups are made from produce grown right on the fine western farmlands surrounding the rancho kitchens. The vegetables, pastes, and poultry used in rancho soups are top grade, But best of all, they're simmered for hours to give you the soupiest, homemadest tasting soups that you ever poured out of a can. So delicious, you'd never guess the price, which I'm sure you'll find amazingly low. Try a can of Rancho Soup with dinner tonight and see if it isn't the most delicious soup you ever tasted. By Jane Endicott. Girl bites dog. The story of Jane Endicott Reporter is brought to you over these same stations every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Sunnyvale Packing Company, makers of those increasingly popular rancho soups. Tom Hanlon speaking. Hear ye, hear ye. Just arrived our hot side brick oven baked beans, baked with generous chunks of pork and the most delicious sauce you ever tasted. Try hot side baked beans today. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 